Today, I'm gonna to show you how to take a file like this, which can be a CSV or an Excel file, and transform it into something more modern like this, this HTML file where you can sort, search, and easily control the number of results that people see. The best part about this is that we don't need any external software to make something like this. We can use tools that Windows already has. So if that sounds good, stick around and I'll show you how I did it. Now this is based on a JavaScript framework called Bootstrap 5 in data tables. And as you can see here, it's pretty similar to what I just showed you. Now there's a bunch of different variations of this, but I'm gonna use something simple like this just to get us started here. And you can see, here's the JavaScript right here. And here's the references. I'm gonna use some slightly different references just because I have some that I know and I trust, but you can use these, it's totally fine. Same for the CSS right here. And it gives you the HTML to get started as well. I'm gonna do this slightly differently. We're gonna use a PowerShell script, which PowerShell comes with Windows. So you don't have to download anything external for that. So it's actually not that bad. So let's just go ahead and get started. All right, so obviously to do this, we need a data set and you can see the mock people data set that I have here. Now what we have to do is create a PowerShell file and that's pretty easy. You just open a new text file and eventually we're gonna save this in .ps1 format. Now once you're done here, go ahead and open the file. All right, let's start putting in our code here. So this first section grabs the folder where the script is saved. So that way we can work with files in the same location and we don't have to define it with the folder and all that. Now this next section here, we're setting the full path to our CSV file that we're importing and the output HTML file, which you just saw earlier, using the folder that we just got above. So everything's gonna be in this folder. This loads a .NET library that lets us safely encode text for HTML. Now, sometimes when you go back and forth between HTML, there's some weird characters in there. A quote isn't actually a quote, the and sign and so on. So that ensures that we can safely encode the text and nothing will look weird. Well, this section, we're reading the CSV file into a PowerShell variable so we can loop through each row and column of data. So going through this CSV here, now this next part looks a little bit crazy, but just starting an HTML structure. So when you work with two programming languages, sometimes things conflict here. And so what we're doing here is we're gonna wrap the actual HTML part in a quote, but essentially we're using a special multi-line string block on PowerShell and we call it a here string. Anything inside gets treated as plain text. So that HTML is just gonna be plain text for now. And then here, this is pretty neat. So we're grabbing the column names from the first row of data in the CSV and we're turning them into a TH tag which is an element for our HTML table, and that provides the header. So the column name and so on. So it's pretty neat how that works. And then as you might've guessed, we're going through each row and we're gonna get data kind of the same way. We're gonna loop through each row. So for this, we're gonna have the TR tags for the row. And we're also gonna use the HTML encode just in case we have any weird characters we have to deal with. Now we have to import the references to bootstrap and data table script. So that's what's going on here with the script src and then the url right there so we're going to import those and as i said mine might be a little bit different than what you see on the bootstrap website but these work i just know these work good for what i need them for but you can use either you can use theirs or what i have and i'll put this in the video description don't worry now this part right here activates data table so when the page loads jquery will find our table and it's going to apply the sorting the searching going to the next page, all that kind of stuff. It's really neat and it's actually really quick. It's quicker than Excel. And then, yeah, as you can see here, we're outputting the HTML file. We're gonna save it in an HTML file. We're gonna use UTF-8 coding, which is pretty safe. We don't have to worry about weird characters for the most part, but I think for our purposes here, we'll be fine. And of course, you know, once everything goes and works properly, we got a little message here to let us know that it's done. You run this in like Visual Studio or something, you're gonna see the message. If you just do run with PowerShell, it's just gonna go really quick. You might not see the message. It just depends, but either way, we have a message here. Now, this is the part where we wanna save. Go ahead and make sure that save as type is set to all files, and then we wanna save it in the .ps1 format. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this just to make sure everything turned out okay. So highlight the new PS1 file, right click, and then do run with PowerShell. It shouldn't take more than a couple seconds to run, so let's open that HTML file that we just created. Wow, so check this out. We can pick how many rows that users see at a time. 
We can search any value or any field. Sorting is easy and so on. This is great. And of course we can do this all in Excel, but it looks much cleaner here and requires much less effort up front to do all of this. And the neat part about this, this is just a base version of this. You can actually do a lot more with Bootstrap and data tables. Now let's take a look side by side. If your goal is to just view data, the one on the left is much better. Now if you wanna analyze data, perhaps you wanna use Excel, but keep in mind, you can actually do a lot of data analysis with JavaScript too. If that's something you find interesting, let me know and I'm happy to do a video on that. Finally, I wanna mention that this might have been easier to do with Python, but the whole point of me using PowerShell is that many people don't have Python installed, but if you're a Windows user, you will have PowerShell in your system already. Now, if you're a Linux or a Mac user, let me know. There are definitely ways to do this in AppleScript, and Linux comes standard with Python, so that would be pretty simple. Just let me know if that applies to you. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please like, comment, and if you're feeling generous, subscribe. These all help the YouTube algorithm show my video to more people, and that really helps. On that note, thanks so much for watching, and take care, everyone.